Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my controller collection series, and today we're going to be talking all about the NES. Okay, we're going to start this off with a good old classic again, the the NES Dogbone. Now I have two of these, and these originally only came with um, uh, the NES Top Loader, or at least that's how they were introduced. I believe they were sold separately later. Um, I worked at a used video game store, and the, uh, the cable is decent. Um, again, decent for the time, um, although this was like, what, the 90s when this came out? Um, but like, uh, I could be very wrong about when it came out, but, um, yeah, the, uh, it's a good controller. It's very comfortable. A lot of people are thrown off by the angle that B and A are put in. Um, it's still a really good D pad. Um, very comfortable. Uh, you know, just all around a good controller. I do suggest if you hate the normal NES controller, and just can't stand it um, with the corners and stuff. Uh, try to find a dog bone or um, a, a takeoff of, or you know, a, a reproduction of it or something. Uh, and it's still you know all membrane all the way through. Really good pivot point within the D-pad. You know, just a lot of good, a uh, lot of good quality here. All right. Let's see what do we have next. We have one that's a little controversial, which is. The NES Max. Uh, now, I actually like the Max. A lot of people don't like it. They like to 3D print a part in here and convert this to being just a normal D-pad. Um, it doesn't really bother me that much. I, I mean, I can just press on the black parts and, and be fine. Or if you if you can, you can try and kind of like lock this. Um, I would be I would like to see someone 3D print something like a ring. I'm gonna take my wedding band and use it as an example where the ring would essentially lock this slider right here, um, where you, someone could do it without having to take the NES Max apart. Um, again, you know, fairly decent controller, uh, good, uh, good length. Um, a lot of people just didn't like it because of this slider thing and, and doing mishits. Uh, it's one of the first ones that came out that had turbo. Um, these start and selects are still membranes, but these are plastic parts, and then the B and the A is, um, you know, at an angle much like the other NES controller, the dog bone. And I think that's where they got this dog for the dog bone design. A lot of people also like this because of the curves and these two ridges right here that can, you know, get them to help hold on, hold on to the controller a little bit more. Um, like I said, it's very controversial. A lot of people love it. A lot of people hate it. It's, it's actually pr a pretty divisive controller. Um, so next up, we have one of my personal favorites, is the NES Advantage. Now, I've done some work on this one uh, and improved, like these, I, you know, uh, boiled the, the membranes. These are actually membranes. Um, there's no spring or anything making these come back up. So it's a really, really stiff membrane. Um, these are just normal click switches, the number one and two players, so you can swap between the two. Um, slow, which is mainly just hitting start multiple times in a row at a rapid pace. So, and then there's start select. These are also plastic as well. Um, there are no rubber connections outwardly on this. Um, now, uh, when I said that I've done work on these, this is not your classic arcade switch. It's not like the Neo Geo where you hear clicks when you're doing this. This is a ball and socket with membranes underneath it. So it means that there's a pad that's a little bit about the size of this outer part right here that rocks back and forth on top of, of a ball and socket kind of like that. Um, if this is the ball where the board is and the socket's doing this, that ring is contacting membrane pads, which are the same style of membrane pads and the same uh, electronic style as a D-pad. So essentially, this is just kind of a fancy D-pad, although uh, it does have a spring to make it go back to center um, very well. 
And every one of these, I've only got two of them, but on both of them, or any time that I see this ball and socket style, which is pretty often, uh, I think it's almost every arcade stick except for uh, the Dreamcast and the Neo Geo um, that it's in my collection. I take these apart and underneath in that socket part, I put white lithium grease. And that helps make it where it's not plastic rubbing against plastic. And it's, you know, once you get enough friction, it starts to powder and then it catches really bad. It just, it creates a really bad experience. But um, you know, this is a really great controller. It's actually a fairly long cable um, for back in the day. But yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of the NES Advantage. And uh, so is my little one. She started playing... I was like Kirby at four years old and her hands were too small for any of the other controllers, but she could take the NES Advantage and put it in her lap and play. And that's how she got through most of Kirby. Okay, next up, what do we have next up? Uh, ah, something I won't be able to show all of it. So I know everyone's seen these pictures online and stuff. Uh, yep, this is the NES power pad and this is how I store mine is that I fold it up into thirds um, and I very carefully wrap the cord around it and then fold it in thirds on the back as well um, making sure not to damage any of the circuitry where I know where there is like leads and stuff running through this and of course you know do not wear with shoes kind of thing um, you know, I, I was I was an 80s kid, and I played with the power pad just like everybody else, and it was a, a great thing. And of course, like every other kid on the planet, I cheated by, you know, hitting my hands on it and stuff. So, next, is one of my favorites is the, uh, the NES Zapper. Uh, cable is, again, fairly short for modern, but back then it was pretty good. Uh, this is the gray edition. I'm personally not a fan of the orange just because um, now this one is really old. You'll notice that the Nintendo logo has actually come off of this side. It still is on this side. Uh, this one's actually so old that the plastic has started to oxidize quite a bit. Uh, I need to go back over it with the uh, UV protectant uh, spray that I use and just give it a good wipe down again. But you know, it's, it's got the normal action where you can get that nice, satisfying, you know, click from it and stuff. And the trigger is basically just a slide trigger like most of the other light guns back in that day. Um, it still works beautifully. Uh, every once in a while, I'll clean the lint out of the end of, end of the zapper where you can see the lens and stuff. But, uh, yeah, this started, this was what started it all for my love of light gun games. Um, you know, uh, Duck Hunt and Hogan's Alley and all of the other light gun games. I absolutely love this. And um, this is one of the main reasons I have some of the older curved CRTs uh, in my game room. And uh, that's it guys, uh, have a wonderful day. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.